performance. That's why it will be a key. See how Wofford handles this pressure all game. They don't typically turn the ball over a lot. Can they do that tonight? Sanford double-digit favorites. They're in white. Wofford in black. Chris Ford, our referee, tosses it in the air. Sanford wins the tap, and we are underway on this Wednesday night. Sanford and Wofford have played everybody else in the Southern Conference, but this matchup as we complete the first turn through the Southern Conference slate. Jaden Campbell off the mark from downtown. Yeah, got a really good look, though. He got lost on that offensive end, had a wide open three to start this game. Off target on this first one, though. Right away, Sanford's pressure forces a 10-second call. And that's it. The pressure we talked about, you'll see it all game long. Makes or miss. They're just going to apply the pressure. There wasn't even a ton of trapping. Just keep that ball in front of them, making you go side to side. you got to get that ball over in 10 seconds. Sanford starters floating across the bottom of your screen as Dallas Graziani gets it inside. A.J. State and McCray able to finish, and Sanford's on the board first. Yeah, Tor with a great bass, uh, bounce pass there, hitting the cutter. A.J. State and McCray. State and McCray, the junior from Florida, averaging just over 13 points a game. And the key scores for this Sanford offense as Wofford is able to break the pressure this time. Court trip inside. State and McCray on the back of Kyler Filowicz is going to be called for the foul. Some good body control. Ended up sitting on him a little bit. Nobody went flipping, hitting the ground hard. A.J. State and McCray giving up, I don't know, 50-ish pounds to Filowicz there. <laughs> Off the baseline, out of bounds, a catch and shoot. Quick trigger from Dylan Bailey. Yeah, great shot there. That's something that Wofford could definitely use today. A good three-point shooting day would be in their favor. Dallas Graziani able to answer. Graziani coming into the night scoreless in two of the last three Sanford games, but he's got a three, he's got a steal, and Jaden Campbell has two more. Sanford gets scoring so, from so many spots there. Their guards really are past first point guards, so Graziani and Jones we talked about earlier today getting other people involved, but he'll always have active hands on defense. That time, knocked the ball away. We talked about the turnovers and the Sanford pressure. Already two Wofford giveaways. The Bulldogs have turned into points. As H.J. State and McCray is called for a very quick second foul. Yeah, good news for Sanford. They do have a very deep bench, but you don't want one of your... I think at the end of the day, they were just trying to confirm who the foul was on, and uh, we're having a little uh, in replay issues on the other monitor so we were able to get that taken care of it for the refs thanks guys shout out to our crew <laughs> back there trying to get the shot that's right a little extra work today by the way wofford's gone to their bench early as well the freshman quentin Meza into the game for the first time so is jeremy lorenz who the terriers just got back from a return from injury this past weekend he made a big impact in that Furman game Dylan Bailey has to go to work, gets it on the rim, and finishes. Tough work from Dylan Bailey. He's got five quick ones. Yeah. Wofford had to use the entire shot clock, but was able to get that shot off in the lane, got really deep, and finished. Sure, it's sure. Showing off the footwork into the paint, traveled. Chor's been having a great year for the Sanford Bulldogs, averaging over 16 a game, leading rebounder and points getter for the Bulldogs this year. A fun matchup to watch between him and Filowich in the paint tonight. And Sanford sets up the trap here in the backcourt, and a no-look pass finds Filowich, allows Wofford to break the pressure. Yeah, ended up getting that out of there, but they got to be careful getting that trap and just holding the ball so long. Led to good results this time, though, for the Terriers. What a start for Bailey. He's got all eight of Wofford's points to kick off the Knights. Terriers plus one early as Dallas Graziani gives Sanford the lead right back. Talking about him being a pass first point guard. He comes out shooting, lighting it up so far here today. Bailey carefully gets it across the midway strike. Three minutes in tonight, Sanford on top by one. Good shooting starts for both sides, although Wofford's offense has been through one guy. See if they can get... Filowich a touch, they do. Against a chore, his pass deflected. Bailey corrals, shot clock running short again. Corner three, in and out for Mesa. Sanford's defense gets a half court stop. Nathan Johnson in transition. A little bit strong from downtown. 
Rebound eventually corralled by the Terriers and Anthony Arrington. Ancha had a great game for Sanford on the road against ETSU, helping uh, get that victory sealed. Comes in shooting almost 50% from that three-point line, so he will not be afraid to put that up tonight. Arrington again, this time cashes. Just the 13th made three of the year for the sophomore from Atlanta, Anthony Arrington. Quality shooting start on the road here for Wofford. And again, we kind of talked about that deliberate pace, too. They're not going to be rushing on that half court in. They're okay using a lot of that shot clock. They don't want to get in a foot race with Sanford here tonight. Rossiani fouled on his cut to the basket. It'll be Sanford basketball on the other side of our first media timeout. A little more than four minutes. Wofford is currently 12-9 and nine and is hoping to get a win on the road tonight. And over on Sanford's side, Coach Bucky McMillan is in his fourth season as the Bulldogs head coach. Coach McMillan has led his team to the longest win streak in collegiate basketball while also getting his Bulldogs to the top spot in the SOCOM. The Bulldogs are currently 18-3 and three and are hoping to add a win here tonight in the Pete. Back to you, Blake. Thanks, Allie. Sanford basketball, Nathan Johnson a little strong from three. Graziani, though, tapped the offensive board to a chore to keep the possession alive. A chore traveled. Two early turnovers committed by the big fella. They yeah, did a good job. They had the closeout coming to him and thought he could go left. Just those feet kind of shuffled before he got that ball down on the ground. So a couple of turnovers apiece early on. As Wofford will try to inbound from their own bench. And Sanford does have a tendency of getting some turnovers, but they're playing so many possessions, it's not really that unusual when they're playing so fast. Graziome almost forced another giveaway. Now Wofford has numbers. In the corner, Chase Cormier connects. Cormier. Four for six to start the night from beyond the arc for Wofford. Yeah, Cormier just felt like he had been sitting in that corner for a while, waiting on somebody to break that press and right place, and they found him to knock down that three. Terriers happy to have him back in the mix. He was unavailable on the weekend against Furman. He's a big-time shooter as Ryland Jones answers on the other end. You look at the Sanford shooters out there. Every starter on the team shoots over 40% at the three-point line. Other than one, that's Jones. And he's a he's a 39% three-point shooter, so not that shabby either. Back to a two-point game, 14-30. As Corey Tripp fires a little strong. And a rebound is Sanford's. And a foul on that rebound is going to go against Quentin Meza and Wofford. Bulldogs go to their bench a little bit further. Garrett Hicks in for the first time. Riley Allen's back in for the first time. Dylan Bailey will return for Wofford. Good news for Wofford is this is about as good an offensive start as they could have hoped for. The bad news is that their lead only two. <laughs> Sanford, one of the best offenses in college basketball, certainly the best one in the Southern Conference. Even Riley Allen's back trying to get to work, but had that one blocked. Good work inside one-on-one -on -one by Bilal El Shakri, the freshman from Egypt. Yeah, Allen's back looked like he got in the position he wanted, but uh, El Shakri just got that arm up in the right place, blocked that ball. Hicks off the screen, jump stop into the lane, almost lost it. Johnson also got two feet in the paint, but nowhere to go. Campbell hoisted up and puts it in. Yeah, pretty solid defense for Wofford that time. Can't allow Campbell, though, to get that deep in the lane, but he did a good job finishing over a defender. Sibbles picked up his dribble. Corey Tripp there to help him out. Shackery. Along the baseline, extra pass. Great ball movement from the Terriers. Can they pay it off? In the corner, Cormier again, hits again. You said an extra pass. I'm going to say five extra passes. They did great ball movement. Use a lot of that shot clock again. They are playing right now with that deliberate pace that we thought they would need here today. Chase Cormier, two for his first two. Corner pockets on both sides. Garrett Hicks off the screen. Nathan Johnson attacks. Hicks catch and shoot, a little bit short. Rebound tapped around and tapped out of bounds. Last touch by Wofford. And 
we should have gotten a shot clock reset, but did the shot clock says four right now. It should say what 19 or oh, that one just slipped. So now we're good. Shot clock at 20. All right, just confirming, making sure. Sam for basketball and a little bit more time to work with Chandler Leopard into the game for the first time. Josh Holloway as well. Leopard spotted up in the corner. Not this time. Another player off the bench, though, that is a great three-point shooter, but so far for Sanford, they're not falling, not like they are for the Terriers. And a nice take by Bailey, just couldn't scoop it back up and in. Sanford racing back the other direction. Holloway off the bounce, got inside, his own scoop rolled off. Both guys just couldn't quite get the right English on those reverses. Right-hand layups on the left side of the buckets. Neither Bailey nor Holloway got it to fall. Cormier again, in and out this time. That was a soft touch on that shot, just barely goes in and out. Hicks had his mid-range, Jay rejected, but right to Riley Allen's back. Right place, right time. Allen's back just gets that finish at the rim. Back to a one-point game, and it stops a bit of a scoring drought for Sanford. They were one for their last five for the floor before the true freshman Riley Allen's back finished that one. Bailey off the bounce, almost traveled. Cormier to the corner. Bailey again, hits again. 11 of the first 20 belong to Dylan Bailey. The Terriers are liking that right corner right now. That rim's looking really wide to them from that angle. Dylan Bailey coming into the night was two for his last 10 from deep. He's three for three beyond the arc in the first eight plus minutes tonight. Wofford a chance to add to a two possession lead. Well, and after the first couple minutes of this game, and it do really seem like Wofford settled down a little bit. They, they've only had two turnovers. They got them both in those first couple minutes. Cormier kicks. Chase Martin. Yes, sir. Just the seventh made three of the year for the Jinx Oklahoma native Chase Martin. Wofford has seven made field goals in the first 11 minutes. Six of them are threes. Terriers in front by seven. Riley Allen spec fouled on his way up. And the Bulldog big man will be at the free throw line on the other side of this break. Time out on the floor. What a year it has been so far for Sanford. The Southern Conference leaders coming into the night. The odds on favorites as it stands coming into the week. Riley Allen back knocks down the first free throw. Allen's back, the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Approaching about 13 minutes a game for the Bulldogs this year. Knocks down both freebies and will be replaced by Sanford's starting center, at Achor. Achor. Now the question is, Boyd, can Sanford get some stops? Wofford threatening to shoot the lights out. Yeah, if you're Wofford coming here on the road, you've had about the best start you could have hoped for. Shooting the percentage they are from the three-point line, but also... Again, they're starting to protect the ball. They've gotten, gotten used to the pressure a little bit. They're not trying to get into a race with Sanford. They're to eat up a lot of the shot clock, and they're playing good half-court defense on the other end. Mays the right corner three. That's off the back iron, but an offensive rebound keeps things moving. Sanford has changed it up back in their matchup zone that they play. Sibbles inside, lays it in. First bucket of the night for Jackson Sibbles. Yeah, it's funny when you hit so many throws, really does spread out that zone and Sibbles line a gap and get that easy layup. Holloway spinning into the paint, lost it. Last touch by Wofford. It was right in front of the Terriers bench who didn't love the call. They thought that should have been turnover committed by Holloway. A chore, quick inbounds, left it short. It's one and done for Sanford on that end. Leading score for the Bulldogs and one of the best field goal percentage guys in the conference and hadn't hit a shot yet today is a tour. Leopard lost it on his way up. So 
turnover answered by a turnover, and Sanford's going to make what is almost going to amount to a full line change here. All the starters back now for Sanford. That includes A.J. State and McRae, who's got to be careful, playing already with two personal fouls. Yeah, we'll see if Wofford identifies that and wants to try to go after State and McRae a little bit. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. Wofford in front by seven. Coming off a huge win at home against Furman, trying to keep that vibe going. A foul in that corner is going to go against Jane and Campbell, his first. Wofford will trade out their fours. Jeremy Lorenz returns for Chase Martin. Dwight Perry's team had lost two in a row at Greensboro and against Chattanooga. Came back home, got it done against Furman with arguably their best defensive effort of the year. Right now it's been the offense things going for them tonight. Lorenz kicks. Sybil's deep corner, no good. Sanford wants to roll quickly. Graziani at shore, kicks. Go back inside for the big man. Graziani for three, and he was fouled. He'll go to the line, shooting a trio. Now Ren just came out too aggressive that time, ran right into the three-point shooter. Foul on Jeremy Lorenz, and no question about the contact. So Dallas Graziani at the line, shooting three. Five, eight point guard from South Florida, transferred into the Sanford program from Nova Southeastern, the unbeaten national champions in Division II a year ago. That free throw a little bit short. Only well, averages four points per game for the Bulldogs, and here he is today, already got six. Graziani, for him, it's been more about his defensive efforts that helped the Sanford team, but so far scoring it early. Bulldogs offense sputtering a little bit in the early going. Just one for their last seven from the floor, but full court press forces Wofford into a timeout. So a 30-second timeout called here by the Terriers. The pressure running. If Wofford frustrate them by protecting the ball, slowing the game down a little bit, we'll have to see how Sanford adjusts that if they're able to keep protecting it. Sanford plays at one of the top ten fastest tempos in college basketball. Wofford, so far in Southern Conference play, has been the slowest tempo team in the league. So far, this game is being played at their pace. Almost a 10-second call. Mesa just beat the timer. Yeah, but you can see they did a better job not waiting and let that trap get them. Shot clock already down to 10 here for the Terriers. Sibbles gets it inside. Filowicz spins baseline, lays it in. Oh, great drop step spin move by Filowicz there. The junior from Canada. Averaging almost a double-double this year. Had been quiet early. Jaden Campbell hits a deep three. Just the third three-point make of this first half for Sanford. Yeah, they got a lot of good shooters. They will not be shy from continuing to put those up. Time out on the floor. A little bit less than eight minutes to go in this first half. Wofford is led by as many as seven. But the Bulldogs in front of the Sanford Bulldogs, 27-23. Allie Durbin, you've been on the Wofford side of things. They've got to be feeling good given the way they come off this past weekend. Yeah, guys, last Saturday, the Terriers came away with the win against Furman, their in-state rival, which snapped their two-game win streak, or losing streak, my bad. The Terriers are known to be a confident team, I'm told, and they know what they're capable of and are sound in their fundamentals. So adding a win at home against that big rival was a validation of their hard work so far this season. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sally. Sanford, meanwhile, forces the turnover out of the timeout, gets it back to a two-point game. Dwight Perry, after that Furman game, called it a program win for Wofford. Everybody who played had at least two points or two rebounds in that game. Always a meaningful game when Furman and Wofford get together. 
Terriers have seen a seven-point edge cut to two, and that's back-to-back -back turnovers out of the timeout. You can see after that first turnover in that series, Corey Tripp was trying to calm everybody down. You see his hands kind of slow it down, slow it down. You just get going a little too fast, and even a little move like that, a little spin move, and you lose the ball out of bounds. Sanford, for as slow as their start has been, has a chance to tie or take the lead on this trip. Graziani kicks. Ryland Jones, a step back three. A little bit off to the right. You know, you're at home. you got the deeper bench. you got the up-tempo offense. I mean, you can stick around in games, and this game could go from down two to up ten pretty quick if you're Sanford. Chase Martin back into the game for Wofford. Under seven minutes left in this first half. Martin. Curling inside. Got it back to Filowich. Yeah, smart play by uh, Martin. I thought he was going to try to lay it up over the 6-9 at Shore, the leading shot blocker for the Bulldogs, but he did a little dump off pass to Filowich instead for the easy bucket. A quiet start for a chore, a chore. He gets a post touch here. Nice cut. AJ Staten McCray lays it in. Yeah, hadn't found his own shot yet, but that's his second good bounce pass to a streaking. Staten McCray for the easy layup. Just two points early for a chore, but he's got three assists. Back to a two-point game. Chase Martin puts the feet behind the line. Not this time from downtown. Here comes A.J. Staten McCray. Tries his own three. That's off the mark. A chore on the offensive glass. A chore after extending the possession. Getting a chance to go to work in the paint. Not getting anything past Kyler Filowicz so far. Yeah, solid half-court defense there, making a short kick that ball out. Staten McCray, not good from the corner. Sanford just three for their first 11 from beyond the arc. Well, and Wofford started seven for 11, but missed their last three three-point attempts. Trip off the bounce, kicks. Cormier right back to Trip for three. That was off from the moment it left his hand. Sanford quickly back the other way. Campbell spotted up. Three-pointers just not falling for the best three-point shooting team in the SoCon. Yeah, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, much less the SoCon. They usually knock those threes down, hit about 11 per game. Trip off the screen from 15, not this time. That's kind of in his sweet spot, one of the best mid-range shooters in the league. Yeah, he uses that strength as a 6'3 as a guard. Then he can make a little room for himself in the lane and usually knocks that down. That time it's Jones doing it instead. Five points early for Ryland Jones. Tie game, 29 apiece. Wofford taught Star to slow down, and they've turned it over again. Campbell gives Sam for the lead. Yeah, that one again. Bailey just looked like he was waiting for the trap to get to him. I'd go ahead and dribble that, split that trap. Don't wait for it to get to you. Same trap in that corner. This time, Martin able to break out of it. Seven straight scored by Sanford. Filowicz doubled. Kicks. Cormier attacks. Trip lost the basketball. And a fight for the loose ball, and a foul is going to go against Dallas Graziani. That's a tough break for Graziani, who I think actually got tripped up from behind first, which is how he lost his footing. Yeah, I think you're right. That ball's loose. He got tripped and ends up on his fall tripping another Wofford player. And he's the, what do they call him in a fight? Like the second guy always second gets guy. caught. It's always a guy. This Moses one, couldn't believe it. Yeah, this one not a fight, just falling on the floor. Graziani takes a seat. Josh Holloway back in for Sanford. Four minutes left here in this half. Sanford had trailed most of it. But a 7-0 run has given them a three-point lead. Floppy action for the Terriers and a kick back out to Sibbles. Sibbles inside and a nice lay-in down low from El Shakari. Nice offensive set that time for Wofford. The three-pointers really gone away. It slowed down the offense a lot for the Terriers, but that way they this time they worked it inside for the easy bucket. Then shoot it in for Sanford here. Riley Allen's back. Gets it back to Garrett Hicks. Lucas Walls, the true freshman, powers it up and in. First bucket of the night for the freshman from Knoxville, Tennessee. 
You say the bench was in right now, but, you know, this bench is the fifth leading scorer bench in the country, so they get offense off that bench as well. Tripp tried to save it, couldn't. Heels on the blue paint. Wofford turns it over in the backcourt again, and Sanford will have possession on the other side of this break. Bulldogs, they have gotten back in front. We'll see how these final three plus minutes play out but they're coming back in front really on that defensive end first you know turning the ball uh turning the terriers over now and lock them down a little bit better in the half court as well nathan johnson on the kick sent that into the first row just the fourth sanford turnover of this first half compared to seven wofford giveaways here early on Wofford, for context, turned it over just 10 times against Furman on Saturday for the game. Already got seven and make it eight. Now only an average 11 per game, so about to get that in the first half if they're not careful. Riley Allen's back trying to carve out some space off the right block. Going to work with the left hand, not quite. defense gets a stop trying to tie the game back up here on this trip Dylan Bailey got off to such a quick start this time dumps it inside for El Shakari oh El Shakari kicks Arrington across the floor a dangerous pass and he paid for it Nathan Johnson in transition couldn't get that to go Hicks trying to follow it up able to get it out of traffic that's just Sanford in those passing lanes again. It's what they love to do. you got to be careful with the Terriers. Always be aware of that fact. Holloway a bit too strong from downtown. Here comes Civils and Wofford. Mesa in transition, hits the three. Quinton Mesa, the Utah native, had just two points last time out. A big hit from downtown there is Wofford's eighth three-point make of the half. It leads to a Sanford 30-second timeout. Yeah, puts them back to 50% for the for the first half here. Eight for 16 from the three. We talk about a lot. Wofford the second biggest uh, rebounding margin in the SoCon, so a pretty good rebounding team. And when you're playing at a deliberate pace like they do, limited possessions, when you can do that rebounding side as well, you limit those second chance points. Sanford right now 10 and 0 if they out rebound their opponent. Four and three if they get out rebounded. Out of the time, El Shakari's got a run out and a slam. Not the slickest of transitions coming down from holding on to the rim, but nevertheless, still counts as two. Counts still as counts. two. Campbell on the other end, powered it through the contact and a chance to give Sanford the lead right back. Unfortunately for El Shakri, this one could count as three. He got the foul, but uh, Campbell strong enough to finish through it. Although it had been a slow offensive start to the first half for Sanford, that does not apply to Jaden Campbell and what he's been able to give Sanford so far in this opening 18 plus minutes. Tough finish there, and he completes the three point play. Yeah, 13 already for Campbell. Sanford's lone loss in the league, the one that snapped that big winning streak at Furman. Campbell struggled, had just two points, a quiet night. It's been far from quiet in this one. Right, Wofford did a better job getting that ball through the press without letting that trap get to him. Bailey hounded by Walls, nowhere to go. Mesa gets it right back to him. Single-digit shot clock for Wofford. Arrington turns the corner, his floater strong. The tip no good. The smallest guy on the floor, Dallas Graziani, corrals it. Yeah, got in the lane, but it kind of came off his hand strange. That I, one did not come off the say, hand strange. That came off awfully pretty <laughs> for Ryland Jones. His second three-point make of the first half, and don't look now. Sanford's in front by four, and almost forced another turnover. A late whistle and a foul is going to go against Walls. But again, it's every time they can't let that trap get them right there in the corner. you got to get that ball passed out or dribble it out as quick as you can. You get that trap on you, you're in trouble. 
Sanford still has one more foul left to give before any free throws. That's kind of an amazing thing when you think about how much yeah. pressure they play with, how they are all over you. And uh, Wofford not even in the bonus yet. Neither team in the bonus, but a pretty clean half in general. In fact, Wofford hasn't gotten to the free throw line yet in this first half. Shot clock and game clock separated by about nine seconds, and the, neither clock has started yet. Now it does. Wofford likely going to try to hold this as long as they can. Try not Tri to leave Sam for too much time. Yeah, Tripp's had a very quiet half. Leading score, zero points here today. Sanford's done a great job on him. Other guys have picked up the slack. Bailey nowhere to go against Ryland Jones. Timer at five. Jones almost picked his pocket. Trip forced into a contested three off the mark, but an offensive rebound. And a whistle for the referee who signaled for a shot clock violation. Yeah, bounce off the rim should have. Should have been Wofford's ball on the side here. Now. I think that's going to be the call. Yeah. He's calling it again. The, the horn still went off, but it went off well after the ball hit the rim and should have reset when it hit the rim. So it is going to be Wofford ball with a little more than seven seconds left. Unfortunately for Wofford, that means they have to end the, end the balls too, and this one safer puts the most pressure on you a lot of the time. Terriers get it into Trip. The six seconds. Trip off the screen. Martin across the floor. Bailey a little strong. Filowich, no. And that is how the first 20 minutes comes to a close. Walford led by as many as seven, but the Bulldogs score the final six points there in the first half. For both of them in the first half. Yeah, sure. No points scored as well, although he's given Sanford five rebounds and five assists. So we'll see. If those two guys get going as these second 20 minutes get underway. If Wofford wants to come out of this game with a victory, I think they are going to need trip here in the second half. They can't depend on that three to fall at such a high level as it did in the first. In the corner, trip fires away. He's off the mark from deep, but Filowich is on the offensive glass. Trip inside this time. Couldn't get the lay-in to go, but Filowich followed it. Yeah, but second and third attempts at the goal, that rebounding advantage just swung Wofford's way on that position. Kyler Filowich was monstrous against Furman. He had 17 points plus 10 rebounds, his seventh double-double of the year. And Achora, sure had that thing go halfway down before it came back out. Yeah, those have been shots that have been falling for Achora all season, shooting over 60% from the field for the Bulldogs. Shore had the number one field goal percentage coming into the night of any player in the SoCon. Filowich ran into a crowd. Yeah, second time of that drop step. He's gotten on a chore, but good help side that time from Sanford. A.J. State and McCray, a race trip that time at short range. And he'll stay down here with Wofford, but with just five to shoot. Yeah, we saw good help side a couple times from the Bulldogs that time. Swarming defense as the Terriers were able to get inside. And we'll see if Wofford goes right back to their big fella here with very little time to work with. Filowich trip deep corner, has to hoist and missed everything. Follow was short there from Sibbles. It's questionable whether he beat the horn or not. Doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, but Sibbles is right in the right place to get that offensive rebound. Just a little bit extra time, he could have put that one in. And check foul against Dylan Bailey is just his first. Trying to deny Jaden Campbell, who's leading the way for the Sanford offense so far tonight. Senior from Ontario. Coming off a game where he had a dozen against ETSU. He's got 13 already tonight as Dallas Graziani hits his second three of the game. Just like Graziani started the first half, comes out looking to shoot here and knocks down another three. Tripp flings it across the floor. What a find. Anthony Arrington helps Wofford beat that pressure. That's lots of practice, and trusting you, your guy's going to be where he's supposed to be in that press break. Trip inside. Filowich waits for the traffic to clear. Couldn't get it to go down. Yeah, Chor got a good block there from the backside on Filowich. State and McCray, no. A Chor's follow, no. A third opportunity leads to a foul. A foul inside is going to go on Jackson Sibbles. Just his first. 
It's early in the second half, but right now to me it feels like this pace is more in the Sanford Bulldog manner. Those shots seem like they're getting up pretty fast in the half court for Wofford this time instead of using more of the shot clock. Shore at Shore at the line. His first free throw is short. Man, it has been that kind of night so far. The Bulldogs leading score. Yeah, solid free throw shooter, solid three-point shooter. To again, been scoring at will against just about everybody a Chore has this year. Knocks down that free throw. A frustrating time last time out for a Chore. Had just three points, fouled out against ETSU. That was his season low far and away in terms of scoring output. Yeah, there's been a few games where he's been in foul trouble and hadn't gotten to play a lot of minutes, but even in those games, he's usually scoring at a pretty, really good clip because he's so efficient. Short gambled and lost. Sivils off the window. Just the second bucket of the night for Jackson Sivils. The transfer from Murray State. Looked like Sivils was trying to check that opposite side corner for a second, see if he's going to kick it out for three. Ended up keeping himself and had a nice little left-hand bank shot. He's called for his second personal foul there. A little too much contact against Jaden Campbell. Sorry, three team fouls against Wofford. I don't think there were three team fouls until about 12 minutes into the in the first half. Officials have done a good job tonight keeping things flowing. Outside of the <laughs> replay reviews we had in the first half. <laughs> Been an excessive amount of whistles. Graziani fires again, hits again. Dallas Graziani continues to knock shots down. Four of four. Field goals for Graziani tonight, three of three from beyond the arc, and that was saved. Ryland Jones couldn't finish around Civils. Wofford finally able to break this pressure. Sanford's finally up to about their average for the season from that three point line. They're 41% now of this game, and that's what they shoot as a team in a typical game. He's in the worth the screen. Filowich kicks. Arrington a deep two is good. Tough take and make from Anthony Arrington Jr. And a timeout on the floor. 16.42 for more on that. The third member of our crew, Allie Durbin. Allie? Yeah, when Bucky McMillan came to Stanford, the home crowd was really nothing to write home about. But in his first year at Stanford, he wanted to change the culture of the fandom at the school. The Buckyball campaign gained traction all around Birmingham, and people came to see what Buckyball was all about. Along with, the camp, along with the campaign, a blowout game against Bell Haven, where the Bulldogs scored 133 points. It caught the eye of Sports Illustrated, ESPN, and Fox Sports. Sanford hasn't looked back since each game, and has felt more. And the crowd has grown more and more. Between the student section and the fans, the Pete Hanna Center never fails to feel packed. Back to you guys. Thanks, Allie. Wofford with the basketball. Quentin Mays' three is good. Second three-point make for the true freshman tonight. I mean, if we've got to be honest, you know, Alabama is a football state, so it does take a little something to get the basketball crowd out. There's a good basketball crowd in Birmingham, but Bucky McMillan came here and put this exciting form of basketball in. He's recruited well. They're playing great in his drawn crowds and built this great home, home court advantage. Right. Perry and Wofford knew what they were getting into. Sanford winners of 19 of their last 20 Southern Conference home games coming into the night. Their only blemish was in that SoCon regular season finale last year at home against Furman, who eventually won the Southern Conference tournament as well. So far this year, Sanford's only blemish in Southern Conference play was at Furman. Filowich inside, hangs on the rim. Yeah, Tripp has not been able to get on the board offensively, but that time he drew the defense's attention and found Filowich for that easy dunk. 15 minutes left. Ryland Jones off the high screen. Back to a chore. His three was off. Wofford a chance to tie things back up here. Jones, one of the best assists men in the SOCOM, but he's over on that stat right now. He has done great in his own offense. Already has 10 points, but hasn't got an assist out there. Filowich kicks, trip for the lead. That's good. Wofford in front, timeout, Sanford. Corey Tripp was 0 for his first eight from the floor tonight. Back here in the Pete Hanna Center, Birmingham, Alabama, Punky McMillan and Sanford out of the timeout, trailing by one. 
17 and a half minutes to play. The Wofford Terriers so far coming on the road. They have been stride for stride with the league leaders. Yeah, it felt like for a little while they just had to hang in there, but they have been able to do it and get over that hump of when well, they had a little turnover stretch there. Nice draw out of the timeout. An easy one for Jaden Campbell. He leaves the Bulldogs with 15 tonight. Sanford back in front by one. The story of the night so far has been the shooting of the Wofford Terriers. Ten three-point makes. They've got as many makes outside the arc as they have inside the arc so far tonight. And they've taken more threes than they have twos tonight as well. They've been living at that line. Nowhere to go for Mesa on the attack. Lorenz has to get it up. El Shakari instead missed everything in a shot clock violation. And that one was a shot clock violation. We, we got, got one. It. We got it. Had a couple of false starts early. <laughs> Can confirm that shot did not draw iron. So that one counts as a turnover too, but at the same time, you use the whole shot clock. It wasn't a live ball turnover that led Sanford to a fast break, so you can set up your half-court defense. Allen's back in the post against El Shakari. Into the paint, kicks. Graziani, another one. A little bit strong this time, but an offensive rebound for Nathan Johnson, and he was fouled. It looked like he might have gotten hit across the face by Jeremy Lorenz, who picks up his second foul. Yeah, maybe a little scrape across the face there by fighting for that ball and that offensive rebound. Graziani finally misses one out there. Wofford will make some changes as Kyler Filowich returns. Be an ISO here for Jaden Campbell. Spinning back into the paint. Campbell left that one a little short. Johnson, another offensive board. Graziani, mid range, Jay. No. That rebound finally corralled by the Terriers. Yeah, Sanford not try able to take advantage of having three shots at goal that time. So Wofford a chance to nudge back in front. Under 13 minutes left. And a foul away from the basketball is going to go against the man who ended up on the floor, Jaden Campbell. Yeah, he's trying to fight over. It looked like they were going to do a little handoff play there. Fought over the top of that screen. So Phil, which ended up keeping it, but knocked his player down in the, or got, got knocked down in the middle of that contact. It's the first foul against Sanford. It took a while for Sanford to register a foul in the second half. Lorenz splits the defense. Extra pass from Martin. Cormier hits again, his third corner three. Yeah, just really good offense, unselfish play there. A couple extra passes, finding a wide open man in the corner. 17th assist today for the Terriers on their 21 made buckets. You can't leave Chase Cormier open. Coming into the night, 70 of his 102 attempts this year were from beyond the arc as a whistle and a foul is going to go against Filowicz, just his first. You can tell from those numbers, too, it's almost all off good passes for the Terriers here tonight. 17 assists, that is a great number to have. Not a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. Normally we're talking about Sanford being the team that does a great job sharing the basketball. Top 30 in the country in terms of assisted made field goals. Tonight it's been Wofford on top by a couple. Yeah, Sanford's not shabby either, though. They're 12 on their 19 mage buckets. <laughs> and maybe a screen assist there. Riley Allen's back to free Ryland Jones. Sanford back in front. Ryland Jones has been efficient tonight. Just seven shots to get his 13 points. Yeah, the dual backcourt for the Bulldogs, 28 points. Filowicz deep inside the paint. Across the floor, tried to kick it and was fouled. That's going to go against Nathan Johnson. And it'll be Wofford basketball on the other side of this break. To be prepared, then his making his non-conference difficult. Wofford traveled to the University of South Carolina for an exhibition game. University of Tennessee, Virginia Tech, Oklahoma State, and all the way up to Canada to prepare. Although they took losses, the Terriers competed against Power 5 schools at a high level, which they feel helped prepare them for this tough Southern Conference. The Terriers are hoping to get a win here tonight because of that experience they got from their, their non-conference play. Back to you guys. 
I think Sally and Wofford has not been scared of the Hannah Center tonight. Chase Cormier, another three-point make. He's got four tonight. Garrett Hicks has an answer. Three-point ball is now falling for both teams over 40% from that line. First make of the night for the grad transfer from Alabama A&M, Garrett Hicks, who's getting some big minutes here in this second half. Filowicz got to the middle of that zone, tried to spin it up, and was fouled. That's going to go against Lucas Walls, his second. Finally, what is it, 11.07 to go in the game. Wofford is about to shoot their first free throws of the night. And this has been about the one area Phil which has kind of struggled in this year. He's been so effective in so many ways for the Terriers. But he's had a hard time at that free throw line this season. Tyler Filowicz just 33% at the free throw line this year. Now, coming into the night, he was 7 out of 13 over his last three games. So an uptick recently. But he's 0 for 2 there. Unfortunately for Sanford, a tap out gives Wofford another look. Bailey off the mark from downtown. And a fight for the loose ball. And finally a whistle and a tie-up. And the arrow pointing Sanford's direction. I think we've done pretty good on our review calls say, today. We're, we're uh, undefeated so far in this game. Well, listen, we helped with the first one. <laughs> That's right. Donated a monitor. They couldn't even made the call without you. After a third replay review of the night, back to work. Sanford in front by one. Ryland Jones open again. Not this time. Ooh. Wide open. That's a scary proposition to leave any Sanford Bulldog that open at that three-point line. Especially a guy that's already made three threes tonight. Ryland Jones comes up empty that time around. High post catch for Filovich. Going high, low with trip. Trip in the paint, falling away, got bumped, going to the line. Yeah, even with the tough offensive night the Trips had tonight, that's one he's got to take advantage of. Use that strength against a little bit shorter Jones on the inside. Colin Ryland Jones just his first. Corey Trip at the line. And his first free throw is good. Corey Trip has meant so much to this Wofford team this year. Only Vontarius Wolbright has a higher usage rate in the SoCon this year over at Western Carolina. So much of what Wofford wants to do flows through Corey Tripp, which is why Terriers almost have to be thrilled that they've got a one-point lead and Tripp has just four points. Yeah, and four points had not been very efficient here tonight, but uh, getting it done without him being real effective. I think it's five points for Tripp. Wofford plus one approaching the midway point of this second half. Hicks off the high screen, fires away, and connects. Second, second half three for Garrett Hicks. Just like that, Sanford's got as many makes from behind the arc already in the second half as they had the entirety of the first. Yeah, catching up from that three-point line. Wofford's got 12 makes, Sanford 10 now, both teams in double digits. Tripp wants the basketball back off the screen. To the corner, catch and shoot. Arrington connects. Back and forth we go. Anthony Arrington's got his second three-point make tonight. Staten McRae had it ripped away. Man, great hands that time. Strong hands to rip that ball away. Big time sequence there for Arrington. A three on one in the steal on the other. Bailey a corner tray. His fourth three-point make tonight. He got that ball to Fulich, relocated to that deep left corner and knocked it down. Six straight scored by Wofford, and Sanford almost turned it over. Rylan Jones to the floor, saves the possession. Yeah, a little bit of a sloppy possession so far for Sanford. See if they can get it going here at the last 10. Walls into the paint, powers it up, and was fouled. The second against Corey Tripp. Yeah, a little bit of a silly one for Tripp, the way he kind of slapped in there with that ball when he's dribbling. If he could have just gotten his hands up and made Walsh, the freshman shoot a tough shot over the top of him instead, sends him to the line. So Lucas Walls going to the line, just his 11th and 12th free throws of the year coming up. 
No problem on the first as Meza and El Shakari return for Wofford. Jaden Campbell's going to check in for Walls if he makes the second. Which he does. So back to a two-point game. Doesn't shoot a lot of free throws in his freshman year, but he does a good job when he does shoot him over 80% from that free throw line. This made free throw allows Sanford to set up the full court pressure. And Arrington traveled. I think that may have been a little bit of a frustration play from Arrington. He got a little push when he went to receive the ball, but he was able to gather his, his balance there. But when he turned, shuffled both those feet before getting the ball on the ground. Sanford a chance to tie or take the lead back on this trip. Hicks again. He's got another. Sanford leads. What a big second half it has been for Garrett Hicks. All the little guards for the Sanford Bulldogs knocking it down from the outside today. Sanford six of nine behind the arc in this second half. Yet yeah, Wofford has hung with them stride for stride to this point. Shot clock at six. Meza back across the floor. Arrington has to hoist it up. Short. Ryland Jones has the board. Solid defensive possession for Sanford that time. No openings. And Jones goes coast to coast. Jones Fifth. just yeah, kept that kept that dribble alive and kept the pressure on. Didn't let the half court defense set up. And after Wofford opened up a four-point lead, Sanford has scored seven straight. Crowd chanting for a defensive stop. Arrington with five to shoot, trying to turn the corner. Another three-point look is off the mark. Yeah, not, not very close that time, but they turned that defense into offense here opportunities. Jones had it poked away. Trip likewise. Sanford has numbers. Two on one. Hicks up top. Plays it in. And one. The veteran off the bench, Garrett Hicks, has come to play in this second half. Score, Campbell's got 15, Jones has 15, Graziani 15, Hicks now 11. I mean, they're just getting scoring from all over the place outside their typical scores. Even crazier about this Sanford start is one of the preseason favorites for SOCOM Player of the Year, Jermaine Marshall, hasn't played a Southern Conference game. Sanford went on that huge winning streak in large part without the guy that was expected to be their best player all season long. Bulldogs hoping to get Jermaine Marshall back at some point in the month of February. Working without him right now. Trying to win their eighth SoCon game out of their first nine. Under seven minutes to go. Sanford's lead a half dozen. Took about nine seconds to get it across the pressure of across that half court line that time. Mesa running out of room along the baseline. Chase Martin into the paint through Graziani, laid it in. Second bucket tonight for Chase Martin. And after a 9 0 Sanford run, time to see if Wofford has another punch back. have had one all night to this point. Jaden Campbell had that shot altered by Martin. Yeah, if they're going to be able to finish this game and get that punch back, they're going to have to get some stops second half. They haven't gotten many. Terriers a chance to make it a one-score game again. Martin curling, spinning. Mesa catch and shoot. <laughs> Not this time, but a foul on the rebound is going to keep things down here. Yeah, Mays was relocating, but it looked a little off balance when he took that three, but Wofford did a good job crashing those offensive boards to get that foul in a second chance. Foul's going to go against Jaden Campbell, his third. Sanford still with one foul left to give before Wofford shooting free throws. Filowicz. Down to the box against it. Shore, who stoned him right there. 
That sure turned him away. Sanford's defense gets a stop. A.J. State and McCray off the mark from deep. And sure fighting for the loose ball, allows Sanford to keep it down here. Campbell, left open, puts it in. Third three-point make for Jaden Campbell. Latour only has one point out there today, but he has been really effective still, leading their team in rebounds and assists. Eight rebounds, eight assists, two blocks. Just got his second one a minute ago. And in that time, just fighting for the loose ball, keeps that ball alive and gives Sam for that chance for a second chance three there. Sanford by seven, five minutes to go. Meza on the attack kicks. Bailey against Graziani, couldn't get it to go. The tap, no, and Jones has it for Sanford. A three-on-three -three break, it's sure. A deep post catch, and finish, and a foul. When you're having a bad shooting day, one good thing you do is a big post yourself up right there, like we've seen from the Bulldogs all season. At sure, at sure at the free throw line, trying to complete the three-point play. He can't. Free throw rattles in and out, and a cheap foul against A.J. State, and McCray is his third. And it's the last foul Sanford had left to give. If you're Wofford, you're kind of wondering, like, hey, what, could, what do we have to do? We're down nine points, but we are 50% from the three-point line with 14 makes, and you're still down nine. Interesting, right? Wofford didn't shoot it well on Saturday against Furman. Still found a way to win today. They have shot it extremely well from downtown. But trail by a minimum of three possessions here with a little more than four minutes to play. Sybil steps behind the line. A 15 three-point make. Yeah, that was a big make right there. Terriers really needed that one to inch closer. Now they got to find a way to get some stops. Guard that one, but also watch the goal because Sanford can drive a short big at the rim. Jones working off the screen and roll. Pumps, probes, kicks. State and McCray had it poked away, but only to a chore. A chore, a tough fall away. Shorts. Yeah, I'd rather see him go up strong with that ball instead of fading from about 12, 15 feet out. Wofford working in the half court. Civils. Back out front to trip. Crawford with 15 three-point makes tonight. The first time all year they've had that many. Runner short from Filowicz. Tip to trip. Cormier. Back out front. Trip off the bounce. Filowicz had it poked away. Got it back. Kicks. Cormier has another. What a game it has been. For Chase Cormier, five three-point makes. Hicks was guarding Cormier, but was all the way in the paint trying to poke that ball away from the pass that went to Filowich, but Filowich was able to corral that one and get the good kick out for the open three. Three-point game, less than three minutes to play. Jones along the baseline. Inside, what a catch from a chore. Comes up limping a little bit. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, great play from both players there. Big one for Sanford to get this lead back out to five. Trip off the baseline screen. Swings around. No. Filowich, yes. Again, Achor had to totally come in on the help side there, leaving Filowich wide open on the back side. Good job finishing that second chance opportunity. That's 12 second chance points for the Terriers tonight. And it's the eighth double-double of the year for Kyler Filowich. Ten points, ten rebounds, the bulk of the damage here in this second half. And he's got six assists, too, so he's done a good job getting other people involved. Again, Ryland Jones off the screen, got caught in the air and turned it over. A rare turnover committed by the veteran guard. And Wofford will have a chance to tie this game again when we come back. Put up 44 threes. They made 17 of them against Coastal Carolina. But 16 three-point makes tonight, far and away the most they've had in a Southern Conference game so far this year. And one more of those three-point makes would tie the game with 150 and counting to play. A 
Out of the timeout, Dylan Bailey surveys. Couldn't get it to trip off the screen. Now gets it to him on the logo. Trip attacks off the bounce, almost lost his footing. Falling away, had his shot rejected, tapped out of bounds, last touch by Wofford. Yeah, great defensive possession. Trip did just almost slid completely into the splits there. <laughs> he kept one foot planted, was able to not turn it over, but could not. Bulldogs trying to extend this back to a two possession lead late. One, one about the only times of the game that Sanford will be okay using some clock, make sure they get a good shot here. Wofford's got a lock down, can't let the Bulldogs score. A.J. Staten McRae blocked from behind, but a foul was called on Sibbles, his third. So A.J. Staten McRae is going to the line, one of the Bulldogs' best free throw shooters this year. Yeah, Staten McRae came up to set a screen, just slipped the screen, got, got away from his defender to the goal, and Sibbles had to foul. His first free throw is pure. One more look at the contact here. Staten McCray, an 86% free throw shooter this year. And he's got a bump. Sanford on top by five. And a chance to set up some full court pressure. Looks like just some pressure, make him use a little clock coming up the floor, no trapping and taking chances. Got to depend on your half-court defense here to get you a stop. The Bulldogs got to remember to box out, no second-chance opportunities. Bailey along the baseline, turned it over. Garrett Hicks, what a second half he has played. 12 points, and now an all-important steal with less than a minute to go. Yeah, I think you've got to foul here because you got to create extra possessions. Wofford hasn't fouled yet, but they force a turnover. Trip into the passing lane, attacks and scores. Timeout, Wofford. I honestly feel on, on those traps, I think they were trying to foul a little bit. They were getting a little contact, being real aggressive with the traps, but, hey, they'll take the better result of forcing a turnover. Out to nine with four and a half minutes to go, but with 38 seconds left, it's a one-possession game. And they are putting some pressure on, which is the first time they have shown this tonight. If there's one thing Sanford should be used to, though, it's pressure because they can deal with this every day in practice, and so we'll see how well they handle it. Ryland Jones trapped and is forced into a timeout. So Sanford uses one of the two stoppages they have left. And it'll be a 30-second timeout for Bucky McMillan. And I got the call wrong. Three inbounds for Sanford and Ryland Jones, and then the Bulldogs have to get it across the midway stripe before that shot clock gets to 20. Jones gets it in, Hicks across the floor, Campbell. The Bulldogs beat the pressure this time around. And Campbell has it ripped away, turned over. 22 seconds left, Trip for the tie, it's good! Corey Trip just his third make for the floor tonight, ties the game at 79. Sabre still has a timeout too if they want to call it, but they may run it out here and just trust their playmaker with the ball in his hand to make the right decision. Seven seconds left in a tie game. Ryland Jones off the screen. Jones trying to get free. Inside at shore. Lays it in. Point seven seconds left. Sanford in front. So Wofford, no timeouts. The hoist at the horn is no good, and Sanford survives. Wow, such a great play. Ryland Jones does make the right decision. Off the screen, gets in the lane. Dump off path for a tour for an easy